blogger, yes. I probably went to the school of how to start blogging the wrong way. It's kind of evolved into a different perspective on life and the social web. It's not necessarily a how-to blog. It's more of like, hey, what's this all? This whole thing about what's happening online, and you know, how is that affecting our offline relationships as well? We first started our blog. It didn't really gain much traction, and I said, let's turn this over to our residents. The blog is nothing about our apartment business, but it really, really gave us a lot of Google juice to our apartment website. I blog about Detroit. I get emails and notes and Facebooks and Twitters of, you know, we've seen your 40 things to do in Detroit. We're going to knock them off the list one by one. My blog is MrsWebersNeighborhood.com. Basically, it follows my life as a new mom. I talk about things that I learn as a new mom. I post tips for new moms. And I also talk about positive things happening in Metro Detroit that have to do with kids. So I've been blogging for nearly three years, every week. I send that out every Monday morning. For me, it's, it's sharing ideas and, uh, and optimism about the opportunities that we all face, certainly here in Detroit and really around the world. And it's meant to be an expression of creativity, of innovation, of hope and inspiration in an empowering way that people can read something Monday morning and say to themselves, I'm going to take a fresh approach this week. I'm going to try something different. I would sort of chronicle my travels. I'd meet people and I'd film them and talk to them. and. Uh, sometimes I would film staff members and sometimes I would film uh, customers. But my real objective was to find out, hey, how are things going on out here in the stores? I mean, really. I don't post unless I really have a point of view to bring to it. So when I do blog, I'm blogging about, you know, my facets are marketing, branding, technology, and Detroit. New opportunities are coming through social media. Social media is how we're connecting now. And if we're not getting more people on social media in Detroit. It's like not being wired for telephone 50 years ago. In order to find uh, what's really you know, my passion and to explore that, the Street Culture Mash was born. I created a blog called needforsheet.com. If you've ever been to my site, you'd see all these little cartoon characters of all the pistons, and I drew those. The blog stemmed out of one cartoon of Rasheed Wallace. One of the things that I do enjoy blogging about my music, about social media, about Detroit. We run a blog that features various historical locations and landmarks of Detroit, and it chronicles our adventures when we're out. We'll write about what happens, people that we meet, locals that we talk to. I originally got into a website to sell my paintings. Then I realized that this could be an art medium in and of itself. So I started on a number of what I would call four art web projects. I truly feel like Detroit is a really cool brand right now. It's a happening place, you know. Even when it was not cool to be from Detroit, I was always proudly, you know, from Detroit. And I, I find that the only people who were who were like that back, you know, maybe 10 years ago were, were musicians. Primarily my blog is a music marketing advice column. I share artists that are doing interesting things via the web with their music. I love to write and I thought I had stories to tell. It became an obsession. It became about people coming in and carrying on a conversation through my story. You go to networking events and you see other passionate people and then you can't help but mirror their passion and then it just grows. And I think in my blogging what I try to do is to give that sense of transformation, of how out of what appears to be disaster and catastrophe and crisis can come opportunity. And to recognize that that is why so many people, young people, come to Detroit. Particularly with the ideas and the interest in Detroit and what's happening on the ground here. And, you know, I've sat down and, and I've talked with, you know, people from all around the world about these ideas. And I get this feedback of like, yeah, everybody's looking to Detroit to see what's happening next. It's always scary to be first, we're gonna do it. We're gonna come down and say, we're gonna start a digital venture capital firm in the city of Detroit. And hopefully not only will we be able to make a difference, but we'll pave the way for others because all of a sudden it doesn't feel quite as scary. If we're able to attract young people into the city who are creative, who have ideas, um, who are able to become sustainable through their business, creating their own jobs, I guess. And in turn, you know, sparking this whole creative culture of we can do it on our, you know, on our own and together. The sense of community is kind of really surprising. I mean, I guess it's not surprising, but it's awesome. I mean, like I never 
I didn't expect, you know, people to be so supportive of what we're doing. So the idea is to have almost like a gym slash YMCA for geeks and it gives you the opportunity to have access to tools maybe that you don't normally have access to and to the social side of things. So it allows you to actually interact with other people, get out of our garages, our basements and share ideas. The blog is about, you know, the Detroit Literary Network and bringing up the literacy rates in Detroit. You know, I want people to know around the world that Detroiters pick up more than guns. We pick up books. <laughs> and we pick up pens to write. It's time to innovate, it's time to move. One of the things I hope that I can do is to start to reach out and bring all of these people together so we can start to form a kind of critical mass. I began to see that there were huge opportunities just conducting business here in this region, let alone the interest that people in New York had with uh, companies that are doing relevant things in technology. The social media element of it came in and it was just a, a great, easy, public way for me to just put that information out there to everyone at one time. The more involved I became in the community and in different groups and organizations here, I just learned about the many, many amazing things that are going on here and that's what made me want to share that with the rest of the world because I saw firsthand what people were doing to make this city better. The people that are staying here are staying here for a reason. They want to be part of something really big, really great. My son is going to graduate mm -hmm. from college sometime in the early part of the 2020s and the Detroit and the metro Detroit area that he graduates into is going to be just incredibly different from you know what, what we see right now and I very much want to be able to stay and be part of helping that happen so that I can look him in the eye on graduation day and say do you see all this I was this teeny little part of it it wasn't because of me, there were so many other people, but I got to be a part of this. And everything that you see here and all the opportunities came from us choosing to stay, came from us being part of this community. And I want you to know how incredible an opportunity that was for us to be part of something like that. The only thing that holds us back in achieving whatever it is we want to do, whether that be a green economy, an entrepreneurial economy, uh, or just a new economy in general, uh, is, is our own courage. The people who make decisions should be listening to the people who are interested in innovation. There are very few times in the history of humanity when we have the opportunity to grow our souls. And this is the time. <laughs>